Welcome back to the 1980s. And today, for once, our farm is actually extremely well organized. All the machinery is put away, we got the cold storage put away, and then if we walk in this shed, we have all the tractors put away. It's, it's honestly kind of the quiet time on the farm. It's June right now, and the thing is, is we're behind on spraying. We gotta put down a lot of liquid nitrogen side dress, and then we gotta do a lot of post spraying on corn yet. So, we got a lot to do today, and then by the end of this video, I'm hoping we'll have enough money to be able to buy one or two combines. Because currently, I don't have a combine. We're going to need to harvest the beans and corn. And so I'm thinking maybe we'll get like a 7720 or maybe one big 8820. We'll see. So I'm going to go meet up with Nate and another local farmer, Brody Farms, for breakfast quick. And then we got to get doing chores. And also, if you're interested in American farming, that's actually the name of my mobile game. Definitely check it out. Obviously, if you're watching this video, you're interested in American agriculture, so I'm sure you'll love it. Also, in American Farmer, we add the brand new quad track, the quad track Steiger 700, which has 700 horsepower. I think it peaks out at like 730 or 740 something. Pretty insane. It's a beast machine. Check it out. It's on the App Store and Google Play Store. And we got Nate the Great and wherever Brody is. And if you guys are wondering where Buck is, Buck's actually out in California right now, believe it or not. He's out on vacation, so it's crazy times right now. Good morning. What are we eating? Dairy? Uh, I was thinking of some pancakes. Pancakes from okay. the pancake house over there. Where's Brody? I have no clue. I ain't heard from him this morning. That dude is always late. He's late to everything. Well. I ain't gonna wait on him. He can just yeah. get here when he gets here. We might be done by the time he gets here. Well, that was that was decent. I gotta feed some cattle, man. You wanna help me? Yeah, you know I'm always. Oh, going there out. he is. Right when we're getting done eating, he shows up. The Chevy. Did you guys save some food for me or, or not? No. Chevy's really that slow that it took an hour to get yeah, here. Yeah. We had some problems. It wouldn't start. I had to get the jumper cables out and get it started. Yeah. Well, you know what they say. Chevy built like a rock. Dude, those mud flaps, man. I love those things. That's awesome. Awesome. Anyways, I'm gonna hop in my Chevy that was just that I was just making fun of. Okay, we'll see you boys. So this is Buck's mod. Buck does an awesome job modding, and he always puts on a bunch of cool mud flaps and stuff on this. So this is a K10, and then I think Brody had a K20. But I always joke about Chevys, guys, just because I drive Ford in real life. Trust me, I love Chevys. I would honestly consider buying one in the future for my next truck. And no, I'm mentally stable right now. Okay, so I'm gonna fire up the old Model A, and this thing starts up every time. She may look a little rusty, I know, but she she just starts up every time for us. And we're gonna throw her on the hay rack quick and throw some bales, hay bales to the cattle right now because those guys are hungry. Tell me when I'm good. Yeah, keep coming, keep coming. Almost there, about a foot, keep coming. And you're good. Perfect. Oh, actually Nate's got round bales. Yeah, Nate's getting round bales in there. I gotta talk to Nate quick. Nate, do you wanna throw round bales or do we wanna throw square bales? Mixture. Okay, throw that one in there and then we'll throw a couple square bales, that'll work. I just gotta get this in here. Perfect. All right, I wouldn't stand in my way too much. Ah, oh, you're good. Okay, so Nate's got a round bale. I'm gonna throw some square bales. It's a lot more labor for us with square bales, but they work. Okay, so we're gonna unload some bales. I'll start tossing them to the cows, and there we go, keep tossing them. Perfect, it's that simple. Just toss them in, and then it's gonna start taking them. Calm down, boys, we're feeding you. Okay, it looks like we're full, so we're gonna pull out the hay rack. For now, we're just gonna park the hay rack here. We'll detach it. Okay, we're not supposed to get rain for a couple days, so we'll just leave the hay rack outside. It should be fine. I'll throw the Model A under the shed, and we'll get to it. Okay, so Nate's taking the 706 with the loader and just scooping up the manure, and then we'll have a manure pile somewhere where we'll just use it for fertilizer and dump it in the fields. Should work pretty good. There we go. Brody's shutting the gate. Since we're super behind on spraying, guys, like we need post-emerge and liquid fertilizer down, we're hiring Brody to do some custom spraying for us, the neighbor, because he's got a, is it 60 foot or 90 foot sprayer? The 60 foot. Do you want to spray post-emerge or liquid nitrogen? Uh, I can spray the post-emerge. Okay, so he'll spray post-emerge. We'll spray put down some liquid and side dress basically and be able to knock this out i'm gonna send nate to go pick that stuff up if that works you meet back here with your sprayer and we should be good to go sounds good nate johnny called liquid end ready and herbicides ready just hook up the gooseneck and go pick it up okay are we gonna be using our weeders this year well Tell me how good the roundup is, and I'll tell you if we're going to be using those. I have no clue how good it is. <laughs> we're about to find out. It's a new product, man. Dennis Olbull out of Ankeny, Iowa, actually, created this stuff, and it's kind of one of the first times we're using it, and we're going to see if this stuff works or not. So we're going to get the 47 out, and like I said, guys, I wish I had front weights because as soon as we fill the sprayer up, it does get a little light. At some point, I got to buy front weights for this tractor, but... For now, we'll back up to the sprayer, get her hooked up. I got all the hydraulics hooked up. 
we should be good to go. Okay, I'm gonna get the sprayer unfolded just to uh, make sure all the hydraulics are working. Like I said, guys, this is a 90 foot sprayer, so we should be able to cover all of our acres pretty darn quick with it. Okay, Brody's actually got the same sprayer, and I'm thinking that might be a 90 foot too. So, I mean, we'll really be able to cover some acres. Okay, I'm gonna back up to Brody, so that way when Nate gets here, we'll just have everything ready to rock and roll. He'll be able to pull the, the trailer right behind us, and we'll be able to start loading. That's a good looking pair right there. There. Yeah, very similar. Is that a 44-40 or 47? Yes, it is. It's a 44. Dang. Can I hop in real quick? Yeah, go ahead. So this is the 44-40. Oh, it's on a power shift. It's a quad shift over there. Gotcha. It's pretty much the same as the 47 over there. 47 is just a little, little newer than this. But yeah, it's a nice tractor. It's got a loader. I like it. And there's the man. Okay, so what do we got here? You should have picked up everything. You got harvest side on half the trailer and you got regular nitrogen on the other side. Perfect. We'll back her up and get her loaded so while we're spraying nate's gonna be our tender guy he's just gonna drive around with that truck and keep us fully loaded and we'll start filling now we do have y drops on the sprayer so it's gonna just drop dribble nitrogen in between the row because i know what you guys are thinking you can't just spray liquid nitrogen atop a corn plant it'll burn it like crazy so that's why we got y drops on it okay we are full let's roll we should be able to knock out some acres pretty darn quick now, I don't have duels on this tractor because we would be running over a lot of corn with duels. Now, if we go up to this corn here, guys, check this out. First, look at the weed mess. It is bad, I know. Fertilizer, we have no nitrogen on this corn. And it's already throwing tassels. And it's like chest high throwing tassels out, which is not good. So we need to get fertilizer on this corn badly. It's like in the 80s, they invented a short corn hybrid. So Brody's off. He's going to start hitting the bean ground right across the road there. And we got a lot of acres over there because we just bought that. We'll get her unfolded. We ran over a little bit of corn at the start, but we should be good. There we go. Let's lay down some nitrogen. Let's not lay down nitrogen in the ditch because that's a waste. Let's start cutting out there a little bit. There we go. So if we look at my handy dandy little digital notebook here, we have fertilizer. Here's me and it is going. I mean, look how big that pass is across the field. It's perfect. The super nice thing about the sprayer is I can lay down nitrogen at 15 mile an hour which is really fast and we can be super efficient with it so this works perfect okay we got that field wrapped up nate is out there with a weeder so mechanical out there we're going to see if there's a yield difference and then i'm going to hop over to field 96 which is some more corn that's going to need some more nitrogen so we're going to drive over there happy house house spraying going it's going really good i got those uh that first field done there i'm going to fill up more herbicide and i'll head back out okay sounds good okay we're gonna get the sprayer unfolded and knock out this 40 acres of corn here and drop her down turn and burn here we go trying not to take out any power lines or destroy the boom here it's always kind of challenging not hitting the power lines and then getting enough to get the outside edge of corn but seems like we're doing a pretty good job okay we are done with that field that field is all fertilized oh son of a gun i missed a little spot right there i think for corn fields we're done i'm pretty sure yeah, we just have a ton of bean fields that we own. Otherwise, for corn, we just own field 94 and 96. And then for beans, we just have a, a lot of bean fields. And Nate's out weeding. It's going to take a while, but he's getting her done. We'll see how that compares to some Roundup. It is now two months later, and actually the corn's starting to come up, but we got something really cool. It's August, getting into September, and you you guys know what time that is. That is time where we start chopping some silage. Speaking of silage, there's Nate and a Gale wagon that we rented from a neighbor, and then we got another one over there. And that's what we're going to be using to transport our chaff over to our blue harvester. If you guys have ever been into the future, people call these blue harvesters the tombstones of farms because everybody went broke who owned one of these but not us we're not going to go broke in the 80s because we own one of these so let's get even though we have four thousand dollars left in our bank account let's get chopping but first off i gotta feed a couple hay bales over to the cows okay so we'll get in the 7 and just grab a couple bales and get these fed here there we go there's no problem lifting these bales and these are some heavy bales that we made here too we might still want to get a weight for that oh a rear weight yeah i know i know i mean i see your back tires back here off the ground by an inch <laughs> but we don't talk about it it's all good. So then we'll just set the bale over here and it should take it. Okay, so the cows didn't actually need any hay.
hay, it took like 16% of the bale. If you look in the bottom right hand corner, I've got 84% of a bale here. So they didn't actually end up needing much hay at all. We're just gonna set this 84% bale over here, back out. When you start them, I get ready to some of these mowers now. I know. They're getting annoying. We're, we're kind of hoarders. We've got four Alice Chalmers lawnmowers and Nate's gotta move them so he can get to the self-propelled chopper. The field queen, as we call it. And this is gonna knock out a good amount of acres for us. Fire her up, Nate. You think she starts? Oh yeah, oh. she starts right up. Did for a second. Think... Let's try it again. There we go. All oh. right, took a little bit of encouragement. Queen always starts up. There we go. So Nate's gonna get hooked up to the gale wagon back here, and then all the chaff is gonna get blown in there. And then all I'm gonna be doing is moving these wagons and unloading them into the blue harvester over here. You wanna put the pan in? Yep. There we go. Okay, so here we go. Now, I don't think we're gonna get too many tons off this field because we didn't put enough fertilizer down, but it'll be decent, I'm hoping. Nate's going, he is chopping along. And then if we look at the chopper right here, it's just eating it up. It's just going along, eating the whole plant instead of a combine, which just only takes the grain, throws the rest of the plant residue. This takes the whole plant. Although there is a certain good amount of residue on the ground because of animations, but otherwise it's working pretty good. Oh, Nate, you missed some. There's your testing corn. How full are you? Uh, the weight scale, I'll take a guess about 17%. Okay. And he's just cruising right along here. This is working pretty darn good. Okay, so while Nate's doing that, we gotta get a tractor to pull these wagons around a little bit. I could, ooh, we haven't used the 4020 in a while. I think we're gonna use the 4020 today. It'll be the best tractor for it. Cause I don't wanna use the 47, it's hooked up to the sprayer. And then the 4955 is just overkill for what we're doing. So the 4020 should work pretty good. Dropper in gear, let's go. Actually guys, we're probably gonna run the Alice. Nate had this outside and I really wanna run the Alice. So we'll run the Alice. Chalmers on the on these wagons. Okay, so we got the Gale wagon hooked up and we'll start shifting up a little bit and get rolling. Oh yeah, the Alice sounds so good, dude. This is why I want to use this tractor. It sounds so awesome. Oh yeah, this is just beautiful. Now it looks like Nate's dumping out a bunch of chaff out the rear, but trust me guys, it's um it's just the animation. And he looks like 100% full, like almost like it's coming through the roof type of full. Nate, how full are you? 97, 98. Hey, I can just come alongside you let's go let's roll boy all right yeah we'll we'll yep we'll go all the way to then how fast are you rolling uh six miles an hour six mile an hour okay let me set cruise or let me set my gear and give her full throttle there we go perfect this is working good so nate's in the field queen he's unloading into me because he's got a full wagon this is working pretty good and then at the end we'll just we'll just switch her out this is awesome actually and there we go we should be empty so nate can drop his wagon and then actually i'll just drop mine real quick and then we can switch them out we'll just disconnect and I'll let Nate get hooked up and I'll go dump her. Okay, let's see if we can fill this silo here. So my unload chute is off to the left. So that means I got to pull in like right here and we should be good. I'm thinking we've actually never used this harvester before. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This will work good. So we'll get as close as possible. Start unloading chaff. There we go. Okay. Well that's unloading. I'm going to check out. Yep. So we got 1500 liters of chaff in here and I'm sure we can store a ton of chaff. So this will work good. And then uh, we'll just keep doing this process. So I'm looking at my hand down the little notebook from the thirties. It looks like we can start planting winter wheat in October, like end of September. So as soon as we get corn off, I think we're going to plant some wheat just so we can get some straw for the cows. And then we'll have some income from the wheat too come summertime. Okay. So I just got unloaded and I talked to Nate and he's 80% full. So what I'll probably do is just drop this cart real quick and then we'll switch out. Okay. We got another cart full and we're going to start dumping over at the harvester. Hey Grant, how much more are we looking to get out of this field? Cause I know we don't have much corn as it is. I'm thinking one more load, Nate. We don't need too much, man. I'll make sure to fill this one up to the brim and this should be it then, right? Yep. Okay, since we're done with these, I'm gonna unhook this one, put the Alice away, or we'll just park her in front of the shop, and then run it back to our neighbor Joe's place quick, and then pay him rent. Or actually, we already paid him rent. I just gotta return it back to him. These things are kinda heavy behind the pickup truck, honestly. We got a little ways to go, but uh, we should be there soon. Okay, so now all of our chopping is done that we need. Since we don't have much cattle, we honestly wanna keep most of our corn for grain, because that's where we're gonna make the most money currently uh, with the economic conditions that we have it. So, we need to buy a combine or two and we don't have much money so we're probably going to end up borrowing a little money on our combine to purchase it we have a lot of money in land it's just not much cash left over for equipment currently okay so me and nate are going to hop in the pickup truck and we're going to go buy a combine maybe two we're going to see what they have over at the dealership 
So we'll see. We're about to go. Well, we're about to drive through my garage, but then we're about to get into a lot of debt. Pretty much is what we're going to have to do. Who's we? I mean, I see a U. Me. Sorry. Misplaced the W for a M. Me. I'm about to get myself in a lot of debt. Okay, so this is what we're thinking, guys. Dealership had these. We talked to the salesman. He's got two John Deere 8820s. He wants to get them off the lot. He's willing to cut us a deal for these. Usually, they're about 75 k a piece. Okay? Hear me out. He wants 120 k so 60 k a piece for these combines, which isn't a bad deal. And we were thinking about buying a Gleaner or something older and smaller, but he can't get these combines off the lot. And so he's willing to offer us a deal. I think if we get them for 110 k Nate, we got to take them. I think we do too, because especially these are the 1979 models. So these are the oldest that these came in. Yep. They've been on the lot for like five years at least, and they can't get yeah. them sold. Yeah. So let's go ahead and just pick them up then. Yeah. So we are going to, on my handy day in a little banker notepad, we're going to borrow enough money for this. There we go. We got enough money and now I'm going to finally write him a check, but luckily our grain will sell for a lot and we should be able to pay off both those combines in the first like 200 acres. And there we go. We wrote him a check for these two combines. I think he actually said we can drive him home today. They're ready to go. So that's the plan. Nate, I'll let you choose what combine you want to drive. I'm going to choose this one right here. She's calling my name. And also two bean heads came with these combines, which they're going to ship from a different location. So eventually we'll get those on the farm and then we just need to find some corn headers once we start corn harvest so this should work extremely well for us a little big combines for our acres but we'll grow into them oh yeah 88 20 got our first gear neutral second third fourth got our separator engage over there that yellow handle got our th is that throttle i'm assuming that's throttle that red switch oh yeah that red switch is throttle got all of our gauges here and got our grain tank back here i'm not sure how much capacity these hold i forgot to ask the sales guy and there's nate rolling down the road with 280 20s one thing about this is the steering is a little wacko with those small tires in the in the rear it's kind of tough to drive straight going road, road speed i'm not having an issue just be careful man don't yank that steering wheel you'll be thrown off the road real quick nate keep her straight man come on i got warm up my tires you know the date's on 500 this weekend i don't know if i said this yet or not grant i hate this train i know <laughs> i've already seen the train go by i'm good Okay, so we finally made it here, and we just gotta figure out a spot to press park these combines. Like our shed space is getting full. Nate, you thinking we can throw them in the open cold storage over here? I'm currently thinking the shed back here where we had the other combines. Do we have room in there? We should, there's nothing in it. Okay, yeah, perfect. If it fits, we'll see. Oh yeah, oh, this will work perfect. Okay, we'll have Nate pull in. It should fit with duels. Keep going a little more. Just to make sure that they both fit on putting yeah. it in a little bit of angle. And we'll pull the other combine in. Easily fits. I don't know if it'll fit with the headers on, but fits for now. Perfect. Uh, it won't fit with the headers. We're going to put the headers somewhere else. Yeah. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching this episode. Next episode will most likely be harvest because we need a lot of money. Uh, we have a good amount of debt and stuff, and we need to pay off our debt and our operating loan. So thanks for watching, guys. And definitely check out Nate's channel and Brody's channel down below in the description. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.